In this session, we're going to be going through a case study. This case study belongs to a client of Dean's and essentially it's a story of how a young single mother uh, on a relatively low income with two children managed to save more than 15 years off her mortgage as well. Uh, just a little bit about Dean. So Dean is a financial planner with uh, Riker Capital. At Riker Capital, we provide a large scope of financial advice ranging from personal insurance to superannuation, tax financial advice strategies, self-managed super fund, aged care, and personal insurance as mentioned. We are five advisors at the moment with a combined experience of more than 60 years financial planning experience and probably more than 100 years plus when you count our support staff as well. Between para planners, financial planning assistants, administrators, we have a large scope and breadth of advice. Uh, we do have a national footprint. We are a relatively large institution with clients based all over the country. And at the same time, we do have that customer service family feel. So you know very well uh, how you and your clients are going to be treated at the same time. That being said, I want to take the opportunity to introduce Dean Tosuki. Dean is going to be navigating through this client scenario with us and he's here with us on the line. So welcome, Dean. Thank you so much for, uh, for the warm introduction, Gianni. Much appreciated. Look, guys, I this is one of a, a very hard I had. Being in the nature of what we do, we see great things at times, and we're able to elevate clients in exceptional ways. Uh, but also as well, there, there, there are times where we're, uh, we see clients um, that are currently doing it quite tough. And we obviously just help them with some strategies to try and get them to their best possible place and, and answer and, and try to help them along the way through a lot of their pain points that they have. This client here was referred to me by a, a mortgage broker. Just to set the scene a little bit and give you guys a bit of a background on this client, she was a single mom. So she had recently went through a, a separation and a divorce with her partner. So she was still quite young as well. So she was around about 42 years old and she had two kids. And one of the, her kids as well actually required special needs. So he was, he was a bit disabled, so he did need a lot of care. And the other one had just finished high school. So here she is, single mother, has a mortgage, has two young kids, and she has actually a lot on her plate. Um, she was in relatively good health, which was great. She doesn't smoke or anything along those lines. Um, and obviously, given the situation around the kids and so forth, her income is quite limited. Um, so she was working as a support worker. She was making roughly around about 55000 a year. Um, so there wasn't a lot of income there for her. And, and this is one of the main misconceptions a lot of the time where people are always like, okay, I don't make enough money and, and I don't feel like I'm, I'm in the right position to be seeing a financial advisor. But despite whatever stage in life, whatever your income is, there's always that need for advice and, and there's always things that we can obviously do to help clients. But yeah, so that's that's a little bit of back, a little bit of a background around the client. Uh, do you want to get to the next slide for me, Gianni? Okay, now... With her, it was quite simple around what her objectives were and, and what she was looking at doing. Now, once again, a bit of a backstory with her was that she has her mother who's, who's in her late uh, mid-60s, or just before her mid-60s. I think she was around about 63. And she started later in life trying to build wealth, and she bought a property down uh, later in her life. And she's almost 65, and she's still got a considerable amount of money in debt. And that was something that really scared her. She didn't want to be in the same position as her mum, uh, buying a property and then having to pay that property all the way through to her retirement and maybe even pushing her retirement further back because she had this large level of debt. What she wanted us to do was, there was a few things on the agenda for her as well. So definitely around the mortgage side of things and trying to find some ways to reduce her mortgage. Now, given that as well, her mortgage, she had a 35 year term mortgage, which was also, which was crazy. She also had as well, she's wanting to look at, look, she at the stage as well, she had multiple super funds, given that she had changed roles a few times. So obviously she wanted to consolidate it within to the one fund because she could actually see as time progressed, one of those funds that she wasn't no longer adding money into, it was just being eaten away with fees. So that will obviously reduce what she has in the long term of retirement. So she wanted to ideally consolidate them within to the one fund. And I think as well, 
The other thing for her, which was a big pain point, given that she's single, she's the main income earner at home and she still has that debt. But most importantly, she has two young kids and one of them having a disability. So it was imperative for her and quite important that when she made sure that there is some ways that we can protect either herself and her ability to earn an income, but also as well, knock on wood, if anything was to actually happen to her, her two young kids are not going to be thrown on the street. Um, and having that protection strategy in place to make sure if anything was to happen to her, her kids are actually taken care of and her family was taken care of. Okay, so that's just a little bit of a background around her as well um, and what we were trying to work towards and, and achieve for her in her dress. There were a few things that we were able to do for her, okay? Now, one of the other pain points that she had as well is obviously... Anything we can do to help her, given that she wants them to reduce uh, her mortgage side of things, any savings we were able to provide for her was actually going to make a significant difference in the situation. Okay. Now, we wanted to try um, and prepare her in a way that, A, the mortgage is going to be taken care of. So by the time or much before her retirement, she's not going to no longer have a debt. So she's not going to be forced to either extend her working career or at least as a bare minimum, have the mortgage paid off before she fully retires. Okay. So one of the things we hope to look at utilizing for her is we wanted to make sure as well that even though that we, we're trying to pay down the mortgage, we still can't forget about the later days and our retirement. Um, because what's imperative as well is that, and, and, and with life, we've always got so many different things we're trying to achieve. So with her, we were obviously wanting to make sure that when she reaches retirement, not only is she going to be debt free, but also at the same time as well, she's going to have enough sitting there within the fund, within a superannuation to help offset the living expenses so she can enjoy her retirement. She's worked so hard to get to where she would be. So we, all want to make sure, we obviously wanted to make sure that she's going to have enough money sitting in retirement. So we decided to go for a little bit of a salary sacrifice strategy to help kickstart and boost the, the super savings just so that she has a nice balance at retirement, but also reduce what she pays from a tax perspective, okay? Um, so we put a minimal amount back into superannuation to offset that and, and to help boost the super savings, but we were able to actually reduce the taxable income as well. So she saved around about $530 a year in tax, which was pretty good. Now, also as well, what we were able to help her with is reducing her, say, and redirecting the tax savings. So the amount of money that we were able to save from her tax, plus the little bit of extra we could add in her normal savings, we utilize that in a strategy to try and reduce her mortgage in the most fast and effective manner as possible, okay? So that involved putting a little bit of extra money towards the mortgage or even into the mortgage offset account. And that will slowly dwindle away the mortgage. Now, on that front as well, a lot of the time, and, and, and I challenge anyone here, when you guys go through and you look at your suit, your mortgage statement and you look at how much your monthly repayment is, when you do all the figures, you'll be quite surprised to see how much of your mortgage itself, when you're making that payment, how much of that component is interest and how much of that component is principal. Okay? And I always do this exercise with clients where you see a majority of your repayments are actually of your paying majority of your repayments are actually the interest component and very minimal amount of the principal, right? And this is the reason why mortgages take so long to pay down. Now, by us adding extra money to the mortgage or whether adding that into the into an offset account, it helps change those dials significantly. Okay, so we start paying a lot more on the principal opposed to the interest. And when we do that, what happens? The mortgage starts to dwindle away. Okay. And it was a very good savings for her. So we were able to reduce her 35 year mortgage by a considerable amount of time. So this will allow her, I think, from memory, she would have had the mortgage paid off by the time she was around about 59, 60. So then she'll still, not only would she have now paid the debt off before she retires, but now then she's got a couple of years up her sleeve that we can start even uh, preparing her further for retirement and so forth. So it, it was definitely a great outcome. And then also on the super side. Now, she had multiple funds. The, the big issue here is when you're running multiple super funds, a lot of the time, one of your super funds will actually have some money coming in, okay? Which is good, right? So your super contributions that your employer's paying goes into the fund, 
plus, yes, the super fund will charge you fees to run it all, plus whatever default insurances you have in there, but at least you've got some super contributions going in there to offset all those expenses, okay? Now, when we run multiple super funds, and what we have noticed with her as well, when you're running multiple super funds, if you've got nothing really been coming in, and then you've got all these expenses coming out and bleeding out, it's going to end up causing your super balance to deplete. Okay. Now we will work hard. We will work hard for it to be able to sustain our lifestyle and to have these, these super savings. The last thing we would want to see is for all of these, all of our hard earned money to go down to, to a series of fees and costs. And we're not really getting much benefit out of it. What I was able to do for her, and, and funny enough as well, she was trying for such a long time to try and consolidate all these supers within the one fund herself. Um, but she struggled, given that obviously the super fund was giving a massive run around. Obviously, they didn't want to release, really release the funds. Plus, she had some issues around her name and so forth. So they just kept making it harder and harder for her to be able to actually consolidate it into the one. But I was able to solve that all for her, and I was able to get it all consolidated into the one fund for her. So now she's not paying multiple sets of fees. It was all simplified. It's all in the one place now. It's all invested appropriately, and it's all within the, within the one fund. The other thing we did for her as well is when I even looked at the fee side of things of what she was paying within the super fund, she was paying a lot of money given that she was running the two different funds. So I was able to reduce her fees by just under half of what she was originally paying. So now we're already ahead because we've significantly reduced the costs. And then I looked at reviewing the investment structures itself as well to make sure that we've got the right investment structure in play. And by doing those two simple things, we've seen a massive uplift in her super at return. Okay. And from memory, it was around about over $100,000 extra at super in retirement by just tying up those little, little simple things. Now, also as well, what we were able to do, and, and I'm sure everyone quite knows, a lot of the time we've got some default insurances structured within the super fund. Now, it was very minimal cover. From memory, she had around about a thousand dollars in income protection and around about thirty or forty thousand dollars in life insurance and disability cover. So it was very small amounts. The thing is, as well, she was paying for it, right? So you're paying for a policy. You're not really covered for much. So the idea was for us to make sure, a, if we're going to have these policies in place, let's make sure, a, we've got enough cover to actually take care of us, and and that's going to be appropriate. But also as well, if we're going to be paying some money for these policies, we need to make sure in the event of a claim, they will actually pay out. I was able to structure and, and, and find a provider for her that was able to A, make sure she had enough cover. Uh, B, I was able to structure it for her in a way that we can even claim a tax deduction by offsetting it a bit, which is partly why we were able to save her that uh, $500 odd a year on your income tax, which was good for her. And now super's consolidated into the one place. She's paying a lot less on fees. Now she's got the insurances set up correctly. So if anything does happen to her, knock on wood, her kids, and she's still going to be able to maintain a roof over her head. And most importantly, the kids as well will be protected. So it was a very good outcome. So I've, I've talked to a lot of this. It's already. But so, yeah, so look, like I was saying, so we utilize a few things on the super console, uh, consideration side of things. Like I said previously, reducing the costs, consolidating into the one place and, and putting a right investment structure in place it made a significant difference at retirement. Because you've got to keep in mind as well, guys, the art of compounding. Yeah, she was 42 at the time. By the time she retires, that's a solid 15, 15, oh, it's not it's more than that. So a solid 25 years or so. Those savings that we've made for her, the better investment decisions and investment structures that we've made for her, that's going to compound over the next 20 odd years. And that's going to make a significant difference at, at, the, at the later stages when she comes to retire. And then also as well, making a little bit of those, those uh, concessional contributions just so that we can reduce the tax savings and also just help inject and, and increase that super balance in the long term. Next. Now, with the insurance strategies. Now, with insurance, a lot of the time it is a lot more complex than people think that it is. Okay? Um, and I don't want to lose anyone here, but so I'll keep it nice and simple. Um, a lot of the time we've got default insurances within our supers, okay? Now, a lot of the time what actually happens is with these default policies, by the time you reach 40 so slowly, your sums insured will increase, 
right? So you may start off with 100,000, it'll increase slowly. By the time you reach 40, what will then happen is, is your level of insurance, the, the, the super fund will start reducing your level of cover. So then you're going to, instead of having now one year 300,000, it might reduce to 275, 280, okay? And year on year, it's going to reduce. Now, logically speaking, you would think that the insurance provider is going to be reducing my cover. Well, technically speaking, my premium should reduce as well, right? But in fact, it actually doesn't. A lot of the time, your costs will still increase. So there, what's happening at that stage is that we're getting covered for less and we're paying more, okay? And usually, specifically at that time when they start reducing it, that's probably the time we actually need it most. That's one aspect of it. And the other thing as well is making sure that in the event of time of a claim, we've got a policy that the insurer will actually pay out on. Now, once again, a lot of these default policies we have within the super funds, they don't go through medical underwriting. They, if you were to make a claim, and we've seen this in the past, if you were to make a claim, that will underwrite you there and then, okay? There has been, unfortunately, instances where clients thought that they had some cover in place and, and they've gone through the super fund and they've tried to make a claim, but the insurer has then declined the claim because then once they've gone, once they've gone through that underwriting process, which is pretty much just assessing their health in this situation, they'll turn around and say to them, look, we didn't know you had this or you've had this, we're not going to pay it, okay? So what we recommended and what we always recommend to clients is to actually bring that underwriting process forward at the time of applying for cover, let's make sure that the insurer knows everything so that if anything happens from that date where the insurer, the insurer has covered us, we're actually in fact covered, okay? So much easier to claim and it's a lot more certainty and peace of mind as well, both uh, on both sides. This is the fun part. This is where I get very excited with and see, seeing the numbers. So what I was able to do with her and, and, and for her, I'll, I'll actually run through some basic figures as well, but we were, we were adding a minimal amount. So once again, her income was quite limited and given her income was quite limited, we weren't able to add massive amounts of money back onto the mortgage, but it was something as simple as $100, $150 extra per week towards the mortgage. Doing that, but over the term of the loan, instead of paying that off within a 35, 35 years, instead of paying the mortgage off the 35 year term, we were able to significantly reduce the floor. So I'm trying to see the actual figures. That means by the time, like I was saying earlier, by the time she's around about 58, she'll be debt free. Okay. For her, great outcome because then that leaves us not only have we saved that so much extra time. And now she doesn't have to retire at a later age. But now at 58, she'll be debt free. She's got another couple of years until she retires. Then we can start even continuously to focus on building her retirement savings so that she doesn't have to retire when she's past 70. Okay. So that, that was a great outcome for her as well. And even doing little things, so like I think with her as well, even with your mortgage repayments, some things that can make a significant difference as well is doing something as simple as changing your payment frequency. A lot of the time, people are paying their mortgages monthly. And obviously, sometimes it makes sense given your cash flow. You might be getting paid monthly, but by changing your frequency, whether you pay that weekly or whether you potentially pay it for a year, by doing those two simple strategies, either or, that could shave a considerable amount of money on time. I think well, usually it could shave anywhere between two to three years of an average mortgage by just doing that. And the reason behind that is obviously given that you're pretty much doing more payments over the years, so you've been able to fit a little bit more extra money into the mortgage, which obviously helps pay it down a lot faster. That was a bit about her. So guys, just to let you know, everything, I, I, can, I let Gianni run through this section. That's okay. Yeah, not a problem. Thank you very much, Dean. Uh, really appreciate you going through that case study with us. <laughs> just take a moment while everybody is on the line, just to go through our advice disclaimer at a super high level. Everything that you've gone through, everything that we've gone through in this session is general advice only. It does not constitute personal advice. Anything uh, that we went through here isn't specific to your personal financial situation. And on the back of that, I strongly encourage you to make an appointment with Dean if you'd like to know more about how some of these strategies could potentially affect your financial situation. Again, 
So please bear that in mind. Uh, very good. Look, I will look to conclude that session. If you are looking to book in an appointment, please don't hesitate to get in touch with Dean. His details are on the screen there. It's dean at rikercapital.com.au. His mobile number is listed there. Or alternatively, if you simply want to go straight through and book an appointment in with Dean, please don't hesitate to scan the QR code using your phone there and Dean's available appointments will be made available to you. All you need to do is put your details in and you can book in a time. I will give you guys a chance to scan and put any last minute questions into the chat if you do. But otherwise, Dean, I really appreciate your time and your insights on this one. I think it was very valuable for people to understand how they can reduce their home loan, how they can make tax effective contributions to super and how they can ensure they retire comfortably while insuring themselves as well at the same time. So thank you again, Dean. Yeah, most welcome. Anything like Gianni is saying, guys, I'm more than happy to help out. If, if anyone's got any questions or they'd love to, to, to have a chat, I'm more than happy to reach out to you guys and to answer anything and I'll do anything that I can to help you guys out. Like I was able to help out this time. Thank you again, guys, for attending. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dean, for your insights and please don't hesitate to get in touch, guys. Thank you very much.